Hello, folks. If you shop on Amazon very much, you've probably noticed that when you search for certain items, you might only find a couple well-known name brand items mixed in with dozens of cheap off-brand items from China. There are often loads of identical items with slightly different brands from different sellers. Maybe you see these items as annoying filler that clogs up the search results, or maybe you see them as attractive options because they're low prices and because they often list huge feature sets. Either way, these cheap items show up in categories ranging from electronics to household items to tools. I decided to try out some of these cheap products to see how much value they actually offer, if any. In this video, I'll be reviewing the first of these type of products that I picked up, which is an HD camcorder. These days, most people have a smartphone that takes reasonable HD video, and DSLR and mirrorless cameras are popular and often take much better quality video than consumer camcorders do. But I believe that the camcorder form factor is still popular for a few reasons. Uh, first, some people simply find this form factor convenient for a lot of uses. I'm one of those people. Uh, camcorders also usually have good image stabilization, lots of zoom, and flip out view screens. Most of the big video camera brands still make multiple camcorder models, so I must not be the only one who still likes the camcorder form factor. On Amazon, I found page after page of cheap Chinese brand camcorders, so I ordered this one to check it out. It was less than half the price of the cheapest name brand camcorder I could find. It says it'll record in 1080p at 30 frames per second, and it has 100% five-star reviews. When I'm done with my review, uh, you can decide for yourself if you think all of those are legitimate. I picked this up for $70. Uh, the cheapest major brand camcorder I could find was a Sony model that has been around for a while and has somewhat similar specs on paper, uh, but it is $100 more expensive than that. So it wouldn't really be surprising if the Sony was better, but the question is just how much better. I wanted to see if this cheap camcorder offers nearly enough value to be a worthwhile alternative to a real camcorder. So let's get into it. The box uh, doesn't have a brand name on it or anything. Uh, it says full HD high definition. And if you look at some of the incredible information it gives you about the camera, it says that it has a CMOS sensor, it's a video camera, it's a digital camera, and it's a camera. <laughs> so a lot of really detailed information on the box. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to talk about the camera itself and then the microphone. Just uh, take a quick look at them, and then I'll actually switch over to recording with this camera uh, when I talk about the rest of the accessories. So the camera itself, uh, it feels very light, um, you know, very cheap, uh, kind of toy-like, not really too surprising. And if that was the only issue, uh, I, would, I could overlook that pretty easily. But there are a few oddities that relate directly to performance, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about those. On the front, you can see the kind of fake microphone grill it has here. Uh, there's actually only one, if you look real close in the camera, you can see there's actually only one little hole. Uh, for the microphone. So even though it, it might kind of be designed to look like it's got, you know, a big microphone grill up here for stereo microphones, really just one tiny little microphone hole there. All the buttons do work. Um, they don't have a great feel to them. Uh, you know, very clicky and cheap feeling. Again, they work though, so I could overlook that pretty easily. Now as for the lens, one thing that's kind of typically a benefit of a camcorder is that they, they tend to have a lot of optical zoom. This one does not have any optical zoom, which again, for the cost, isn't too surprising, but you know, that is you know, one advantage lost that uh, a camcorder normally has. Also, uh, just from looking at this uh, front, very front element of this lens, which really I don't think is an element at all, it's just a, a glass cover piece, uh, there's no anti-reflection coating on it at all. So, you know, normally you would see that little bit of a tint from an anti-reflection coating. It doesn't have that, so uh, it's probably going to be susceptible to some contrast loss whenever there's uh, something bright, um, you know, kind of maybe either off to the side or even especially directly in the lens. Uh, you might get some flare, some ghosting, some contrast loss just because no anti-reflection coating on that, uh, that front piece of glass. This is also a completely fixed lens. Now what that means is not only does it not have any optical zoom, it does not even focus. It is a fixed focus lens. So just by nature of the small sensor size and the aperture that the lens uses, um, it's got just a fixed focus point starting 
um, you know, a couple feet in front of the lens, and then from there out, everything is in focus. But there's no way to adjust to focus on things closer or further away or anything that totally fixed focus. Also fixed aperture, no way to adjust aperture. So it's an extremely basic lens, you know, absolute minimum required to be functional. Also, it does not come with a lens cap or a cover or anything basically to cover to protect this uh, outer front element from getting scratched or damaged or dirty or anything like that. There aren't even threads in here or even like a step or anything to where, you know, you could measure it and just get like a snap-on cap. Nothing at all included or any real simple provisions to, uh, to add on yourself any kind of a cap. Now, it's probably hard to tell in the video, but the screen on here is very low resolution. Uh, you can't, you know, get a real good idea of what you're looking at if you're looking for fine details on this screen because it's very low resolution, but it does at least let you, you know, kind of see. And there you go. As I kind of point it further towards the light, you can see how the, the whole thing just goes completely white. I'm not actually even pointing at the light yet. Um, the light, yeah, see if I block the light with my hand, you can see the light isn't even in the frame yet, but it's just, it's just glaring on that outer lens because there's no anti-reflection coating, so... That's the kind of thing you can expect from that. Either way, functional screen, nothing too exciting. Uh, overall, the camera, nothing too exciting. Very basic, uh, very basic lens on it. It does come with an external microphone that they call a shotgun microphone. And if you pull the little foam cover off, it does kind of have these slots like, you know, like you would expect to see on a shotgun microphone. Whether this thing actually is designed properly to work like a real shotgun microphone. I'm kind of doubtful, but I can't say it isn't. Uh, it does say stereo on the top. Shows a left and a right. It says it's a stereo microphone. It has a built-in rechargeable battery. You have a little on-off switch, which has off, on, and then on with a low-cut filter. And then you have a sensitivity switch here with a 0 dB, negative 10 dB, and plus 20 dB. And it just has a little 3.5 inch uh, output with a little cord that it comes with to plug into the camera and it just has a regular uh, USB input to charge the built-in rechargeable battery and the microphone is designed to uh, mount on the the shoe mount on top of the camera so that's just a you know a quick look at the camera and the microphone so like I said I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to recording with this camera with this microphone on it and uh, we'll use that video for talking about the rest of the accessories. And this microphone is going to be on the camera. It's going to be pointed right at my mouth, just, you know, just a few inches away from my mouth. So kind of the ideal scenario for the best possible sound out of this microphone. So let's get switched over, see how it does. All right, so now I'm recording with the cheap camcorder off of Amazon. And let's take a look at what it comes with. It does come with a little pouch that holds the camera. And, and just so you know, all the lighting, everything in this room is exactly the same as it was with the other camera. But anyway, it uh, comes with a little pouch to hold the camera. Obviously it comes with a USB cable, but this USB cable that it came with actually doesn't work. I tried it with the camera and with the included uh, microphone. I tried it with other devices. I tried it with the included wall charger. Um, you know, I tried it plugged into computers. This cable does nothing. Defective doesn't work. So not a huge deal for me because I have another one, but included USB cable does not work. It does come with a little remote control. The remote control does work. I didn't test its range or anything, but uh, you know I imagine not super far, but it's just a little infrared uh, remote control. The sensor seems to be on the front of the camera, so it does not work very well from the back or from the side, if at all. If there's something for it to reflect off of, you know, you may get it to work. But for the most part, from the sides and the back, it doesn't work only works from the front. Comes with just a wall charger for USB and that does work fine. Comes with an AV cable that you could plug into the camera and then run this to a TV if your TV has these types of inputs and then you could actually play back the videos from the camcorder onto a TV. It does come with two batteries and uh, they are high power batteries because it says so and they are labeled as uh, 3.7 volt 1000 milliamp hour batteries. Now I don't know if that's accurate or not they do feel very, very light. Um, I mean, this just feels super light. It feels like it couldn't possibly be very much more than just the plastic case itself. But, you know, a single cell 1000 milliamp hour LiPo battery really isn't going to weigh that much. So that could be what's in there. Uh, maybe just out of my own curiosity, I'll try and open one of these up and see if the cell is actually labeled anything inside, but we'll see. But these batteries do have what is, in my opinion, a major design flaw. 
and it, you probably I don't know if you can tell uh, with this camera or not but uh, the contacts right here they are very close together and they actually are slightly above flush from the bottom of the battery so there's nothing dividing the three uh, there's nothing that sticks up further than these terminals so if you were to set this down on say a metal desk or table um, on a metal clipboard against a paper clip against a pen a coin anything you know if you were to put it in a camera bag and it were to come up against something metal or put it in your pocket and it were to touch your keys or a coin or something like that there's nothing to protect these contacts uh, they could short out very easily that could cause burns a fire or whatever so definitely I would consider that as uh, a design issue now granted you know I've just been being careful and you know as long as you're careful it may never be an issue but it's just one of those simple things and a lithium battery can uh, you know can burn in a hurry if it shorts out but anyway that's it that's what comes with the camera so now you're actually getting a little bit of video uh, from the camera and a little bit of audio from the included microphone so you already have a little bit of an idea of the performance but I'm going to now start talking about the performance uh, what I think about the different aspects of it and I'll show some video and photos along the way now on to performance it technically works so it's not a total dumpster fire uh, maybe just the residue you scrape out of the dumpster after the fire burns itself out okay that might be a little harsh uh, first of all the photo performance isn't too terrible it's definitely not the 24 megapixels that it claims uh, the output resolution is technically 24 megapixels but it's clearly upscaled from a much lower resolution the actual detail in the photos is probably closer to 2 or 3 megapixels even at that the per pixel sharpness isn't great and the images overall don't really impress much uh, any smartphone and just about any point and shoot camera these days will put it to shame but camcorders aren't generally known for great photos so they aren't too bad for a cheap camcorder I definitely wouldn't buy this camera for the photos but they are the best thing that it does the video appears upscaled from a much lower resolution as well it's pixelated it lacks detail uh, the amount of detail is far below what should be present at 1920 by 1080 resolution the dynamic range and contrast are lacking also uh, the images just look blurry and they have a flickering quality to certain details that is similar to watching a high resolution video on a very low resolution display it's almost like the camera can't decide uh, what piece of detail information to put on what pixel and they kind of kind of flutter around it's, it's kind of weird it's strange and it's a little bit off-putting at times low light performance is terrible the video is just a noisy mushy mess when the lights low uh, the video also appears to run at quite a bit less than 30 frames per second it has a jerky stuttering motion to it that makes it feel like a lot less than 30. lower resolutions seem smoother but they also look worse which is funny considering how much the 1080p resolution already looks like a lower resolution upscaled digital zoom isn't great in pretty much any camera but due to the low resolution and detail in this camera uh, the digital zoom is completely pointless in my opinion it makes everything even more of a blurry mess and I can't imagine zooming in on the subject with this camera and feeling like it was remotely worth it the zoom also has a single speed and it changes in discrete steps that look jarring the camera does have a digital image stabilization setting but from what I can tell it does nothing uh, I couldn't tell a difference with it on or off and the camera is very small and light so it makes for shaky handheld video and video isn't the only issue uh, audio is recorded as a single mono track no matter what microphone is used so it seems to be a limitation of the camera not the microphone you're using and even worse the audio is recorded at a 16 kilohertz sample rate as a general rule you need a sample rate of twice the frequency that you want to record so a sample rate of 16 kilohertz means the highest frequency sounds you can expect to record with this camera are 8 kilohertz so all in all the audio recorded is really poor and to show that limit of the high frequency recording with this camera I have two clips recorded at the same time one with this camera and one with my phone there was a lot of ambient sound there were birds chirping and there was just a loud chorus of insects trilling as well but when you listen to the difference in the recorded audio you'll see that all the high frequency sounds are completely missing in the clip recorded with the cheap camera you can actually hear an engine running 
uh, nearby that was completely drowned out by the other sounds in the phone video. And that was actually recorded with the external microphone. Uh, the built-in microphone is even worse than the external one. And the last thing I'll point out is that this camera creates AVI files, which I don't believe are natively compatible with Mac or iOS. That may not be true anymore, but it used to be. So just keep in mind that straight out of the camera, the files may not play on Apple devices without a third-party player. The files are also needlessly large. Um, I have cameras that capture way more detail than this one does, and they make files that are around a third the size of the files created by this camera. So ultimately, the photos are okay, but not great. The video is low resolution with poor detail. It stutters, it appears to run well below 30 frames per second. It lacks usable zoom. It lacks working stabilization. It looks horrible in less than perfect light. It suffers glare and contrast loss due to poor lens quality. It's fixed focus and fixed aperture, and the files take up far more space than they need to. But in the end, for me, it's just a question of value. I believe this camera is a horrible value. Sure, it's far less expensive than even the cheapest name brand camcorder, but it has none of the things that make a name brand camcorder what it is. It has a fixed lens, no zoom, no image stabilization, and terrible audio. So other than being called a camcorder, I think this camera has far more in common with a super cheap action camera than it does with a camcorder. But it has none of the advantages of an action camera like size, durability, you know, versatile mounting options, etc. Plus, there's lots of cheap action cameras out there available for less than half of what this camera costs. And with that, here's a bit of a sneak peek at uh, my upcoming <laughs> cheap Amazon product review. So that's it. I would not recommend a cheap camcorder from Amazon. I think you'll find poor performance and a poor value. So hopefully you found that interesting or helpful. If you have any questions or if you have any ideas for what cheap product from Amazon you think I should check out next, let me know. As always, thank you for watching. Take care.